Thanks for joining me today. We are going to take a very rainy day and we're gonna turn it into a day of using our craft supplies. So I'm gonna give you loads of tips, some techniques, and some ways that you can start using all those craft supplies that are loading up your drawers, your shelves, and we're gonna have fun while we're doing it. So let's get to it. We're gonna jump right into this, and the first is to make a playbook. I take all of my embossing folders, my die cuts, and my stamps, and I use some scrap paper and just make one of each. So when I need inspiration, I can flip through all of these, see what I have, get inspired, and sometimes it just need to know what I haven't used in a while. Here are my stamps. I keep the sayings the same as on the plastic bins, and that way I know what's in each one. Next, pre-plan the need for cards. So I write down everybody's birthdays and holidays on a piece of paper, and today we're going to make our April ones. Next, you're going to want to take out everything you'd want to use that you haven't used yet or haven't used in a while. For me, I was trying to make some masculine cards today. I have three birthdays that are for men in the month of April, so I'm taking out anything that is inspiring me. As you saw, I just flipped through all of my embossing folders, my die cuts, and my stamps, so it gave me some ideas of some of the things I wanted. So these are some of my sentiments, dies. Now I'm into my embossing folders, so I'll take out some of these. I have in the front are all regular embossing folders, and then the back ones are my 3D embossing folders. So I'm just taking out all of the ones that had inspired me when I went through. Next, I'm going to go through my stamps and see what stamps I wanted. This stamp is going to be for my husband's birthday. It's actually going to be my husband's birthday by the time I release this. And he and I love to go camping, so we have an Airstream travel trailer. And so I'm going to use one of those. I also want to use some trees and just scenes uh, that might be applicable. I also have never used that embossing folder there, so we're going to try and use that today. So this is literally just me kind of pulling everything out to see what it could be that I want. I apologize for the ring. That's my light that you keep seeing in all the reflections. But here's are, here are some of my stamps that are sentiments for happy birthday. So just pulling out a few. I'm looking for the one for my husband that I wanted to use. And then use some tools you haven't tried. So I've had these pencils for a while. They're watercolor pencils and so I wanted to use those. So I'm taking a piece of watercolor paper and I'm just putting some around and I'm going to put some water on it. So that's how I'm going to try these. I've not used them before. I've not really watched a lot of techniques yet on this. So I'm using a dark green, a light green, and we'll get some yellow in here. And I'm just going to try and make some background paper with these pencils. You know, you get super excited when you purchase something, but then sometimes, you know, you it's not your go-to, so you don't use it. So another tip, tip number five, would be to research techniques. So I'm just kind of playing with this, and I've seen people use these before, so I'm, I didn't just come up with this in my head. So I use Pinterest, and I also use YouTube, but I use Pinterest to start with, and I just look at all sorts of different cards that people have made, and it inspires me. I'm like, oh, I've got an embossing folder that might look cute with that technique or with that type of card. So I'm going to take that background that I just made, and it's a little bit damp, which is perfect. I'm going to put it in my 3D embossing folder, and I'm also going to emboss it. So use just different techniques, whatever moves you. And that's what this is all about. This is about having fun. So these are some leaves and some acorns, and so that's going to be a lot of fun. Now I'm taking a bunch of Distress Oxides that feel a little bit masculine to me, and we're going to just play with different media. So this is me using some, these are some newer tools to me as well. These are um, ink daubers, and they're sponges. They're not like the little brush type. They are little sponges. I really liked how they came out. I'm a little heavy handed and don't do well as you all know. That last one was antique linen. Uh, this one is honey, some kind of honey. <laughs> I'll let you know when I turn it around. 
wild honey there it is and just putting some ink all over this card i'm not really going in any sort of order just trying to make a pretty background and again I'm just using lots of different techniques and that's kind of what gets me going when when I don't know what I want to do I just start playing with some of my tools if you have not as many tools or if you feel limited by your tools just try to use them in a different way and sometimes will just get me excited about my tools again so that was um, sage it said sage something but and this one is a brighter this is the citron with uh, distress oxide. So I'm just trying to get it all, just have some ink on it. And I'm gonna use a water technique. I'm not a big fan of the water splotches, and this is Twisted Cintron. But I spray it here just gently, and then I'm taking my fingers and I'm flicking some of the water onto the paper. And then I'll just take a rag and we'll just get that water off. And then I'm gonna emboss this as well. So again, just using tons of different techniques and just trying them out to see what happens. So those were some ferns. Now I'm going to go back to the other one now that it's dry. And you can see when I tap my fingers, it's when I'm not sure what I want to do next. So these are my Alta New. These are all my little stamp pads. And this is these are some of my Alta News. And these are nice when you have to do this technique, although I didn't like it. <laughs> so I did it and I was like, oh. Oh, don't like that look. So then I took a little brush and I'm trying to put some ink on with that brush. But I'm really not liking how that comes out either. And so a lot of people might get discouraged when this happens. It doesn't discourage me because this is me playing with my tools, learning what, you know, this is probably for a little bit softer technique. And I'm looking for a little bit bolder ink color because I have ink underneath it. But I'm just trying it and seeing what I can do with it. I can change gears. So here I'm tapping my fingers and now I got a dauber out. So this is like a little dauber pen and this is exactly what I was looking for. I just needed a little bit more ink coverage. Same ink pad. It's still an Alta New ink pad but I'm just able to get a little bit more ink so it looks more like what I was going for. And then I'm going to go over the ones that I didn't like there and it turns out just fine. They're a little bit darker but Eh, at the end of the day, nobody but you and I will know that I probably didn't, it didn't turn out exactly as I thought originally. Now I'm going to use a brown and I will put link all the colors at the end because I'm not good with remembering all the colors of the different stamp pads. But these are little acorns, so I'm using some brown for the acorns and for some of the stems. So I think that turned out really cute, even though it originally wasn't really sure how it was going to work. Okay, back to this yellowish one. So I'm using some Hero Arts, uh, this is the Unicorn White Pigment Pad, and I'm just trying to rub a little bit of ink on there just to bring out those ferns because they sort of blended in to the background a little bit. And I use just a piece of tape uh, at the bottom so I don't get ink all over my fingers. Here I'm pulling out some blue. We're going on to the next background. So again, when I get in a mood where I want to play, I just play. So I am using one of those sponge daubers and I'm just, this is no longer watercolor paper. Watercolor paper just looks great when you, when you do some ink blending with it. I try not to always use my watercolor paper because it's a little bit more expensive. I knew that I just was looking for a little bit of color in the background, so I'm using a stencil here. You've seen me use a stencil all the time. It's my absolute favorite stencil when I'm trying to make a theme. Nothing like a little bit of clouds in the background when you need a good theme. So I'm just putting some ink. And by the way, I'm putting ink in the inside cover of these stamp pads. That was Salty Ocean, and then I'm using Bundled Sage as well for the bottom. I got a comment from one of you viewers that said instead of daubing off on a piece of paper, just do it on the inside of the cover. It was a great tip and I'd never seen it or heard of it before and it's a great tip because then you're just saving the ink and you just can keep going back to the inside of the cover. So thank you if you're listening for that tip. And then I'm just using some antique linen. I wanted, I didn't want the background to be crazy bright, so I'm using a very light tree antique linen. It's kind of like a tannish, yellowish color. So now I'm going to stamp my cute little, what I'm calling our Airstream travel trailer, even though ours is a little bit different. And I'm using a gray <clears throat> Stampin' Up stamp pad to ink that up because it, they're silver typically. And then I'm going to use my tri-blend markers, my Spectrum tri-blend markers. And this is really speeded up because I am making four cards today. So in order to keep this kind of reasonably short, and this is probably one of my longer videos, 
and I apologize for that, but I just couldn't get it any faster. I have this so sped up that <laughs> I'm almost having trouble talking to it because it's so, so fast. But, uh, here I'm just using my tri-blend markers, and I love these because they really take all the guesswork out, right? These, they all coordinate really well. When this is sped up, it sort of looks like it's just kind of bleeding onto the paper. And then I'm just putting some more color in here. It looks really, really cute. Let's look, it looks a little plain. And so I use a metallic marker and this is tip number eight. No one knows that I've changed my mind and decided to go with a different color. So that's the fun of this as well. If you go down one path and then change your mind, only you need to know that. And if you're videoing it, the people that are watching your video. And so I've got these two amazing sayings that I bought just for my husband. One says, you are my greatest adventure, and the other one says, I'd go anywhere with you. And we do travel quite a bit together. I'm going to boss this sentiment. As you could see, whenever I tap my fingers, it's when I'm thinking. <laughs> and you see it a lot through the videos. Uh, so pause and, and just visualize what you're trying to do. And it's okay to take a minute. And it's also good to take a minute if you and redo or change so that's the beauty of this. That's what I love about crafting is you get to make more mistakes that you can make like in your work life or even in your family life. Now I'm having a little bit of trouble figuring out where I want this. Because I used blue, I feel like it kind of blends in. So I'm going to put some silver around the corners just to make that pop out a little bit more. It also gives me a moment to kind of rethink I try not to give myself too much time to think because then I overanalyze it and that's what not, this is, that is not what this is about. So I just decided to put some tape on it and then put it down there. And then I'm going to um, use another metallic marker. These are Nora metallic pens. They've got a nice fine tip and then a thick brush tip. And I'm just going to make a metallic border around each of the sides and I'm speeding this up quite a bit cutting some of it out again I've got so much to show you today that I don't want to take too much time to see things that you guys could figure out that's just me putting a little border around it so then I'm going to say you are my greatest adventure on the inside and I'm also going to put a happy birthday sentiment since neither one of the sentiments the one on the front or the one on the inside were really birthday-ish and then I'm using my memento black ink and because it's so sped up. It's really hard to see that, but that's what that was. I love Memento Black Ink for any kind of stamping because it gives a nice crisp image. It's always harder when you use two stamps, and so I did have to go over it twice just because sometimes they're just a different thickness, especially if you use different brands. And so here I'm going to tie in the front to the inside, and I'm going to use some of that bundled sage and create just a pretty shadow of a tree on each side. And I just like when I'm able to kind of bring the two in together. So then I'll attach my outside to the card base. And I always try and wait to do this after I've done the inside of the card, just in case I've messed up the inside of the card. So I think that turned out really cute. So I heard you haven't subscribed yet, and that's okay. But it really, really helps me and helps this channel keep going and gaining traction. So if you would, take just a moment and hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it so much. Let's get back to it. Okay, on to the next background. This is a cute little stencil that I haven't used before. Here's me tapping my fingers trying to decide because, again, this is a masculine card. So I took out some of the antique linen again, Distress Oxide. I love Distress Oxides. They're super fun. Even though I'm not a great blender, I do have fun doing it feels a little bit like when we were five years old again. I use the bundled sage. I don't have a ton of distress, distress oxides, but the ones I have, I really enjoy. This is the peacock feathers color, which I haven't used yet today. It's a little bit brighter. And if you can't tell, I'm trying to kind of match where the embossing folder lines are. So that is a wood looking embossing folder. And now I'm trying to use some different leaves I really don't want to use flowers, but I'm using leaves and branches, and I'm tr trying to match them up to the embossing folder above it. It's a wood-looking embossing folder with some great lines that I think will make this really cute. And I'm just going to stamp all of these images in black, and then we'll use that wood-toned embossing folder to really bring everything out. And I'm using just a press, an air hockey <laughs> controller, but it's just a press. 
All right, and I had to do that a few times just because, again, they were all a little bit different thickness. And now I'm going to emboss this really quickly, take it out, and you can't tell, but yeah, it looks, it's kind of all segregated into little sections. And so I'm just using a brown, a light brown pencil, and I'm just going to color in some of that wood grain look. And I really am starting to like the way this is coming out. It was similar to what I was looking for. And I think even though I didn't exactly match up the colors, they do count go into the right sections. And now I'm trying to figure out what color background I want. I am using Ranger Bolte Medium Matte Glue here. And I did decide to go with the brown because the other colors just weren't quite a match. And then I'm going to put it on a off-white card base some tape and that looks good. I'm going to turn this into a birthday a masculine birthday card. So I'm just going to use, I print these on my computer and I'm just going to, I decided I wanted it to be a color because I do have an off-white base and so I'm going to use a punch and just create cute and ends of the sentiment. And I'm going to pop that up with some foam tape and the outside of this card is done. I'll work on the inside in a bit but then I decide it needs a little something. So I take out my metallic markers and it looks really light in the camera, but it actually looks green in person, but it does have a shimmer. So I do like these metallic pens quite a bit and I'm trying to keep it masculine, but I do put just a little bit of pink on that one tip of that greenery. And then I'm using some different color greens and that one's intended to match more of that teal color. So again, we'll do the inside of this card now with a birthday sentiment. Again, I like to use my Memento ink whenever I'm doing a sentiment on the inside because it usually doesn't fail me. <laughs> and then we're going to just try and match the inside and the outside of the card. I will link all the colors and every tool I've used that I can find a link to. I will link in the description box below in case anyone's interested. I am not monetized by anyone, so that's just for your knowledge if, in case you need something. Sometimes I'm like, ooh, I'd like to have one of those. <laughs> so it's really easy when somebody has it linked. Okay, and then you guys know I love to do the envelopes. So we're going to do some envelopes real quick here. And it probably should be another tip, but I think I'm done with my tips and these are just me creating the cards now. But I love to do the envelopes too. It just, to me, when you can coordinate the envelope with the inside card, it just gives it a little wow factor in my opinion. And so here I put a little bit of gray and then I'm gonna do just an off shadow of green. And then I'll also put a happy birthday sentiment on that one. And then I need to finish this card. I'm gonna use some of that Ranger Multimedia Matte Finish Glue. I also need to assemble this one. I'm gonna use some of that same glue. This glue is nice because it does stay a little bit wetter than the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And I did put it in my own container. So now I'm gonna finish these other two masculine cards because right now it just has a plain base on it. And I'm going to die cut out some shapes. So I'm using the same color as I used on those green leaves. And I also put a little bit of brown and I'm going to die cut out some of the this greenery. And I also die cut out a white circle and also I used a vellum wavy circle. <laughs> and I thought that would look kind of nice and fairly masculine. The only problem is I'm now I'm not so sure where I want this greenery to go. I liked the thought of it and now I can't really decide where I want it. I'm using fairly thick vellum and I'll show you the type of vellum in just a second when we're waiting for it to dry. It's a thicker vellum that I like to use for die cutting. So that's why I use this particular one. And then we'll use some Versamark ink and I'm going to put some embossing powder on that. And I'm using a gold color. I'll link it at the bottom. It's just a gold embossing powder. And here's the thick vellum that I'm using. And again, I'll link that. I bought that on Amazon. So I'll link that for you if you're interested. It's a little bit easier to cut. A lot of times the vellum will say whether it's good for die cutting or not. Now I'm not so sure I like what I came up with because the birthday sentiment is actually pretty large. So it does cover up that green area pretty well. So I'm just going to play around with this. And again, that's the beauty of this. Play, play, play you can always change what you're trying to do. And I think I'm gonna put them on the outside now, but I do need to cut them off a little bit. 
so that they fit a little bit better and they don't look so crowded. And then this is where I bring in my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue because it's got those little teeny tiny leaves. That's all it needs is a little touch of glue. And I love my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. It just do does drive faster than the Ranger Multimedium. Okay, and then to decide where exactly I want to put it, I decided not to pop up that sentiment because it's got a lot of dimension to begin with. So we're going to just pop it on there. And I think this is a great masculine card. Masculine cards can be hard for us. <laughs> I have so many flowers and things like that. So now we're going to move on to this yellow fern card. And I just cut out a white sentiment and I'm going to cut it out in yellow. I don't always separate my dyes when they have a shadow to it. And that's just because it makes it easier for me. So I just cut out both and then I can flip flop it and use it for another card. And I just stick them in the back of the bags that I have that I store my dyes in. All right, so we're moving right along here. We've got those three done. We already have a third one done that we did earlier, and so we'll bring that one in in a second. But I think these came out really, really cute. And then I apologize for the lighting here. My white light was off and I only had my yellow light on, but at least you can see how these cards turned out. I needed four masculine cards and I have four masculine cards just by doing a little bit of play. And I think my husband's gonna love that card. Hopefully he doesn't see this before he comes home for his birthday present. <laughs> and then uh, I like how everything on the insides match the outsides and the envelopes all coordinate. So hopefully you found some of these tips helpful. Sometimes it's hard to get in the mode of creating cards. And so these tips hopefully helped you a little bit. If you enjoyed this content, please click the like button. It certainly helps me know that you guys appreciate it and that you found value in it. Also, if you would, I'm a small channel, so if you could subscribe. Also, you can hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when I create new content, which is twice weekly. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thanks for joining me today.